extinction, the termination of a species. Recently, I joined a very small population of women in the Netherlands, technical women. And this group of women is on the verge of extinction. So what's a very small population, you might ask? Looking at the statistics, we have 180,000 women in the Netherlands who have a technical degree and who have a job. So they are worker. 50% um, of these women don't work in the technical sector. So they have a technical degree, but they didn't pursue a technical career after. They might work in retail, they might work in communication. So from the approximately 90,000 women left, 11% actually works in an industrial plant, like me. Um, looking at the entire population in the Netherlands of working women, this is 0.2%. So I am 0.2%, but I almost wasn't. And in order to explain to you why, I need to take you back to when I was three years old. Um, I had this great interest in my dad's shed, mainly because we had an indoor swing, which I loved. It was amazing, but also because of uh, a very big amount of shiny silver objects. And these shiny silver objects were used by both my mom and dad to make the garden and the house look pretty. So at 10 years old, when my mom asked me, do you want to go to a technical club for girls? I said, yes, really, gladly. Because at this point I could learn what the basic principles were of these shiny silver objects. Um, so I did, and I uh, learned the, the starting point of what I do today. Uh, which is preserving the current state. At 18 years old, I uh, was about to graduate from high school. I had all the beta courses, and I still had this interest in getting a technical degree and eventually a technical career. But I remember um, throughout the year that girls said to me, you're not a boy, are you? No, clearly I'm not. Um, but this is something boys do, and are you really sure that you want to do this? Because it's, it's not really what's expected from you. Um, so I became a bit insecure about what I actually wanted with my life. And naturally, I chose social work for my uh, first uh, university experience. Uh, I'm not proud of this decision because it's very stereotypical of me to think that the only thing a girl could do or should do, what's expected from them, is to um, do social work. But that's what I believed at that time. It didn't last very long. Within six months I quit the job and, um, or quit university and I got a job uh, as an operator in a technical field. A very big shift again from technical to social work, back to technical, but at that time, I really learned that this is really something I want to do. So I reapplied into university, um, but this time I didn't tell anyone, because I didn't want to be influenced again in my decision for wanting a technical degree and thereafter a technical career. So I did. I applied to industrial engineering and maintenance management, um, and I was happy again that I was on the road to be becoming a woman in the in a technical sector. So introduction day came, and before I set my foot into the room of 22 boys, I heard someone whisper, oh look, it's a girl. <laughs> and, um, I was taken back immediately to the point where all these girls said to me, look, you're not a boy, this is something boys do, and at that time I beca be became really scared because this is actually something boys do. Look at the class, there are 22 boys in there. So I wanted to crawl back into a corner and not be seen. Um, but I continued anyway. And in my third year of university, um, I came to a point where I wasn't sure anymore if I wanted to do this or not. 
because um, both boys and girls always said to me that I was weird, that I was abnormal for one thing, this not fitting into society's expectations, and I wanted to overcompensate every time. So I wanted to prove to anyone and everyone in the entire world that I could do this, that I was capable of doing this, and that I could do it better. And that pressure drove me insane. I created what um, I call at home the mountain. It's a pile of problems that I create inside my head with this pressure. Um, and I, at some point, I just can't get through the problems anymore. There's this, this forest of problems. And I was very unhappy. I was very lost and uh, I was on the verge of deciding to quit my course and to do something else, whatever that might be. And it was something my fiance said to me at that time. Sam, when he starts with Sam, I know it's serious. I need to listen. Um, so he said, Sam, why don't you just put something into perspective? Because I can't believe that your entire mountain is based on relevant problems right now. Just take everything apart and look what's relevant. So when I finally figured out what he meant with perspective, I asked myself three questions. The first question was, who is actually holding you back? Who is actually holding me back? So I really needed to look at myself, um, because at this point I was the only one keeping, uh, keeping myself from continuing this course. I'm a perfectionist to the core. If I don't believe I'm perfect, I'm not convinced you are perfect. Uh, of you, you believe that I'm perfect, um, and therefore I'm not capable. That's how my mind works. But the thing is, you can never have the entire world at your back. No one in the entire world will fully support you 100%. I do not have control over that. So the sooner I realized that and the sooner I accepted that, the mountain became smaller. My problems were no longer out of proportion. So the second question is, why would you not fit in? Because I could think of thousands of reasons why I would not fit into this world. But what were the reasons I would fit in? So I s said to myself, maybe you should listen to your teachers more. Because they tell you every single time that you're good at teamwork. That uh, you definitely know the theory that you uh, communicate well. Might not be stress resilient. Stress resistant, I'm not. I might not be as flexible because I'm really structured. But I always uh, saw those as failures instead of challenges. And the sooner I would accept the challenges, the mountain became smaller. It needed a little bit of time because I was used to a negative thought. But when I looked into the positive thoughts, the mountain became smaller. So the last question is, do you really want to keep waiting? Because I've waited a long time. I wanted it, decided on something different, then I did it again, and now I want to quit, so then I should wait again until I figure out what I want. And I've been scared, I've been anxious, I've over overcompensated enough, so uh, is this, should you not jump? Should you not be resilient at this time? Yes, I should. So no, I don't want to keep waiting anymore. And the mountain shrunk again, and it became a speed bump on my road to graduating. And I passed. I graduated, eventually got a job as a maintenance engineer at an industrial plant. And I was happy. And still, I'm somewhere kind of sad. Because I can imagine that a lot of women go through this every single day. Every single day they have these struggles. And currently in the Netherlands, we are putting in a lot of energy in promoting women to get their technical degree. That's great. I support that. The statistics show because those percentages are growing. Women are getting their degree. But on the other side, the, sh the shift into their career, every single year, that percentage is decreasing by one or two percent. So somehow, we don't get women from degree to career. 
And I think that my story is a big part of that. Because I've been beaten down by the same society that puts in energy to promote it. And I got up every time. But I have a support system back home who tells me, okay, put it into perspective. But I can imagine that some women don't have that. And it's quite easy if you feel that lost at a certain point of time to just stay down. It's easier. It gives more peace. So I don't blame them. So I want to ask you a few questions. Next time you see a little girl who has interest in silver shiny objects you let her. And the next time you meet a teenage girl who shares their interests in wanting a technical degree, you compliment her. And when you meet an adult woman who says, I really want to have a technical career, you encourage her. And if you can't do that, then just please zip it. Throw the key away, but don't say anything. Because the main question I want to ask tonight is, please don't let us go extinct. Please let us emerge. Thank you.